Hello and welcome to Wedding Horror Stories. This is your chance to indulge in a few stories from couples and professional wedding vendors about some disasters that have happened on their wedding day. And I know we love sharing these and I know it can be a little guilty pleasure. I guess the moral to the story is that no matter how much you plan everything, things will go wrong on your wedding day. They will. And it needs to be okay. And also that when things do go wrong, it's the people you've got around you that are really going to get you through. But first, a little disclaimer. I'm very aware how shows like Maths and The Bachelor and the like get massive attention and add dollars by exploiting people's feelings and drama as entertainment. Personally, it's just not my cup of tea. I really feel taking delight or gossiping about others' misfortunes in the real world is pretty low. So that's why this bonus episode is not about the bride that OD'd, the horny groom and the maid of honour, or the guest that suffered from a medical episode while sitting in the front row of the ceremony. To me, that's almost like ambulance chasing. (laughs) Does that make sense? I've been very particular about the stories that I share because I want to highlight the positives and the good that can come out of what would otherwise be termed as wedding disasters. I hope you enjoy them. So the first story I like to call Storm Cell Nightmare. This is told from the wedding photographer's point of view. So they were in the Riverland and the day before the wedding, the bride, the groom and all of their family, they got busy setting it up at a local vineyard. They had a marquee with tables, lights, decorations and a PA system underneath. And on the lawn below, they'd arranged rows of plastic chairs for the ceremony with decorative flowers tied on them at the end of each row. The chairs faced a sturdy white wooden ceremony arbour with flowers installed with ties to the little top corners there. The families worked so hard and had spent hours setting up together in preparation for the perfect yet relaxed wedding day. Cue the next day and the bridesmaids were chilling in their matching robes. Hair and makeup was complete. The groomsmen were in their suits enjoying a cheeky drink and the photographers were snapping photos of the bride and groom's final prep. They made their way outside as the bride wanted to have some photos taken with her dog. They looked up and they noticed a dark storm cloud rolling in. And then suddenly, a wall of wind hit them. It was so unexpected, so quick and so strong, they gathered up their things and headed inside. Then the hail started. The roof of the place that they were staying in was made of tin, so the noise was deafening. The hail turned to heavy rain. Down the road, the CFS were called into the area due to flash flooding and trees being knocked over on the road while the locals were helping to redirect traffic. Within 20 minutes, just as quickly as it had arrived, the storm cell moved on. But that was more than enough time. The damage had already been done. The couple's celebrant, a local gal with a four-wheel drive, and one of the photographers headed up to the vineyard to try and help. They surveyed the destruction. The marquee itself had collapsed, breaking much of the decor set up underneath. The PA system was flooded and broken. The plastic chairs had gone flying, but the sturdy ceremony arbour remained stoically in place, like it was taunting them with the wedding that could have been. So celebrant, photographer, and some family members started crawling underneath the collapsed marquee, hoping to find any remaining decorations, you know, that weren't broken. And they bundled up their finds into the back of a few cars and took them down to the couple's backup plan, their local community hall. A busload of guests from Adelaide had just arrived, and when the guests started to learn about what had happened they began taking it upon themselves to decorate the hall with the salvaged items and offcuts from the neighbours' flowers and gum trees. And within half an hour, they had transformed an old community hall into the couple's new wedding venue. Now, the ceremony was two hours behind schedule, but it went ahead 
and after the I do's, the photographers took the couple out to a beautiful sunset by the river to take some photos. When they came back to the hall, it had been transformed again by the guests from a ceremony space to a reception venue with round tables. Armed with studio lights, the photographers caught up on the family photos that were missed during the day and the newlyweds got their party, complete with pizza van, plastic cups for wine and a portable speaker for dancing music. Although it may not have been the couple's original plan, it still ended up being a brilliant day with so much laughter, plus an incredible story to tell. Story number two, cake smash, and not the kind that you might see on a wedding day. This is told from the perspective of the cake maker. Sometimes they're just white knuckling it just to get the cake to the venue. Delivering cakes is fraught with stress. They're adhering to military precision driving and triple checking their prep lists, but nothing can prepare them for the other drivers on the road. And so en route to a wedding, they once had to swerve to avoid a collision and sadly, the cake came off second best. Once they arrived at the venue, tools in hand, ready to fix cake, they were told and cruelly shown a kitchen that they weren't allowed to use. But as luck would have it, they were provided with a table right next to the open barbecue. That cake melted faster than they could even fix it. And the cake maker has told me that she wasn't sure what was worse. The buttercream melting as she's trying to pull it together or the tears streaming down her face as she worked against the clock and the scalding heat of the barbecue to recreate what was left of the car crash cake. They patched it up, covered it with spare flowers and put the cake in the fridge to set as best it could before it was needed later in the night. And story number three, the Bermuda Triangle of wedding cars. Because sometimes you can plan. You can plan and you can plan some more. But mistakes, accidents and things that go wrong on a wedding day sometimes just can't be avoided. For a luxury wedding in the Adelaide Botanic Gardens, the planner had triple-checked every foreseeable eventuality and had personally liaised with all of the vendors to ensure that they understood the requirements of the day. Timing was tight, but she was confident that with her staff on board, they could perform the ceremony to reception turnaround in record time and still give her couple a sense of relaxed and effortless transition while executing her styling vision to the highest standard. With the guests arriving to the ceremony and only a few minutes left until the scheduled start, the one thing that she was missing... was a groom. And a distinct lack of groom is very concerning with only a few minutes to go until the bride is due to walk down the aisle. After a quick call, the planner discovered that the groom and his groomsmen were still at home, waiting for the hired wedding car. Despite confirming with them three times when and where they were meant to be to collect the groomsman and his crew, the company just didn't show up. Luckily, Uber came to the rescue, and after a few minutes to gather themselves up the front, the gents were good to go. Crisis averted and a dream wedding achieved. If you have any wedding horror stories that you would like to share with the Unbridly podcast audience, I'd love to hear from you as well. You can email me or DM me on Instagram. The links are in the show notes. 